Good morning, everybody. Um, so today I'm translating one uh, that I missed due to, <laughs> I believe it was the day I, another of the days that I dislocated my shoulder. I've had several dislocations. Um, and uh, so I'm translating it today because I think it had some very important material that uh, I really would... Um, think I, it needs to be covered. So I'm going to translate. So here goes. Hello, everybody. Or good morning. So we ended the week. This is a Friday. And we are going to be going again to Oaxaca, to Guatla, today. And it's the Sierra. It's the hill where I would call... Um, So the the a lot of the pre um, the people that were born from the revolutionary movement in that area. So besides its culture, it's the land of Maria Sabine. And we are now going to Villalta in Oaxaca and on Sunday we're going to Nahuatlán Filo Díaz and we'll return on Sunday night during this um, route of uh, visiting the hospitals. It's very important. And we have now gone to half of them of, out of the 80 of the hospitals in the IMSS Bienestar program. And we visit them. And we are taking notes hospital by hospital, looking at the functioning of the uh, un, uh, the, the functioning of the hospitals and what kind of what kind of um, services the hospitals and health centers are able to give because we have a as a purpose to raise them up the, or to elevate the, the public health mal, system <coughs> because it was in a very bad state. And we are attending to four básicas, basic demands el que no los that there not be a shortage of medications, el que no los médicos, that there not be a shortage of doctors and nurses, el que mejore and that we better the infrastructure for health. Because there's hospitals and, and health centers that are saturated. And there's also constructions that are in process. Works not finished. And also, we're initiating a program for to rate or to regulate the situation of more than eighty thousand workers that are like part time from the uh, sector of health. And and I'm expecting to end in the end of October this whole uh, run, and at the same time. We are making decisions that's been constituted at the Institute for the Health and Well-Being. It has its operative areas, 
And also, we have defined to increase the budget of health in the amount of 40 million pesos additionally to that which has already been authorized for this year or what was approved in the federal budget. We're also going to add 40 million uh, additional. So that is the reason for this uh, run. And so we're also preparing ourselves. I'm writing the inform for the 1st of September. I've already done my first draft. And it's finishing it up with all its annexations or notes that have to be given to the, uh, been given to the uh, deputies or the conference team. And at 11 a.m., they'll be doing information here with you guys. And in the afternoon, the Secretary of Government um, will be will be delivering the document formally and also we are working on the budget for next year that by law it has to be presented by on the 8th of September and it's uh, we are already informing all the secretaries how much is the, the financial ceiling that's disposable. And the Secretary of Hacienda has, is doing this exercise. So, the, so we are working on it. And at the same time, we are continuing to set down the basis for the, for the country. And in general, the results are good. We are doing well. When it comes to economy, we are doing well, very well. In the programs of well-being and health, the people are happy because now they're getting money, support like never before. We're advancing and guaranteeing peace and tranquility, which was one of the most difficult or complex things. But we have confidence because we work every day in, to that purpose. And when when you act with perseverance, you are able to accomplish your purposes. So uh, international relations are good with all the countries and all the people of the world. We have very good relations. And that's what I can say to you now in general. Uh, he has two matters regarding the case of Rosalio Robles. If you have information regarding whether they're investigating the universities that might have been involved in the deviations of funds by the secretary and commentaries regarding what was discussed yesterday that the judge that took uh, her into uh, the case, he was the nephew of so, uh, someone that 
plaza was opened up a casino and it's a proximity of a school. The chief of government should not says it should not have been open, but it's now operating. And the mayor said that that permits for the center were given by a central government or a uh, local government. Are you considering uh, just reviewing the normal activity of uh, casinos and, and gaming places? The first thing has to do with the investigation that's open that the district attorney general will deal with. And they will decide how far to go. It's an in, it's a, a private agency, and I have no more information regarding that. And regarding regarding the judge, same thing. It belongs to the judicial sector. And it has nothing to do with the executive power. And I do not want to give my opinion because I don't want to interfere with this matter that is in the that it is in the hands of the authority. And I have confidence that they will apply the, the law without con uh, uh, putting anybody in, at risk and looking for that in effect they do justice. I don't see uh, that there would, at these times, in this new environment, that someone would want uh, to con distort the law or to commit an injustice. The public opinion is very um, cautious, or the force of public opinion when it was um, uh, taken the last time, uh, or Santana was uh, lost for the last time, it wasn't actually the the firearms that did him in. It was the strength of political opinion, public opinion. Nobody liked it, and the people wanted the change. And we're talking about. It was the middle of the half of the 19th um, century. And also the same thing happened when uh, Porfirio Diaz fell. Sometimes months in 2010. It was just one small battle in, in uh, Ciudad Juarez. It's something very important. But now, before that battle, there was mobilizations in the city of Mexico against the government. They didn't want him anymore. The people wanted the change, the strength, again, from public opinion. So now, there's something similar to that going on. There's a, a public opinion, a, a collective uh, need that will not permit any illegal or uh, running over or injustice. It's an exceptional time. This is what has to do with justice. Mm -hmm. 
And I reiterate, it's the district attorney that has to decide. And another question regarding the casino. Yeah, we have to review that. I believe that it has a possibility of participating with the uh, city government and then of course the government of that city and if they are violating the norms we need to put it in order even after they've given the permission in the previous administrations and governments, even if it was a school, they could consider it. But a casino? No. 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 It is not prohibited, but there is a normal activity that you need to comply with. We're not going to be, be giving casino permits and bars and uh, places to hang out. We don't even want to build jails. What we want is to make schools and health centers and hospitals, that there be well-being. So yesterday the government lowered its uh, interest rate. What does that mean to you? And what do you, how do you read this reduction? It means that the economy is doing well. And in turn, it's a difficult uh, time. And it's not favorable. And I don't want like before, like to be blaming to external factors because I believe that the most important part is what is gained when it has to do with consolidating the uh, the internal uh, and that is what's most important Yes, the crises can be even um, why? It depends a lot how, how each um, uh, country's economy is. So fortunately, we're doing well. We have sufficient reserves. We have no problems with inflation. We have no depreciation of our uh, money. And because of the uh, predictions and the predictions that are given, and the country could go into a, the, like other places have gone into a recession, like uh, Europe, uh, the growth in China, the problems with uh, the threats of uh, tariffs, and the problems with China and the US, all these things. 
and even what is happening in Argentina could have some effect in Mexico. But we think that we are doing well and we have advantages. And I've mentioned before that it's very important to have a controlling inflation and that our uh, currency not devaluate, that there be investment from foreign uh, companies like this, like uh, foreign commerce, and including that we have the support of our immigrant uh, people that are sending money, resources like never before to their family. All these things. It maintains us well, uh, this economy. And in that way, the Bank of Mexico it decided to lower the rates. This is important because in this way it stimulates growth and lowers the interest rate. There's more stimulus for investment so you can support yourself with credit. It's more rentable for the productive area, a lower uh, cost. And this is can be done because there's stability. And if these um, interest rates go down and there's no confidence in the economy of Mexico, then it could generate uh, maladjustments. But the rates go down and nothing nothing happened. On the contrary, they, they even bettered. The, the, the peso even got better. I don't know how it is today, but last time I looked at it, it did not depreciate, on the contrary. It bettered the peso. It was one of the uh, currencies that, that yesterday came forward in the world or is doing best. So I think it's a good decision and I respect it from the uh, Bank of Mexico. They autonom they're autonomous. We don't get involved in these decisions. And everyone does what they can with what's been given to them in their own function. So can you let us know about the budget? They said that there was an increase in the uh, ex income will be, that there's going to be lots of things disappearing, like the um, daycares. No, we're still working on that, but it's already defined, the politics of development. And we know what the priorities are. There's three. The fundamental ones. Well-being of the country, of the people. What never had ever been in the agenda before. Because before this, it was the so-called structural reforms. And so the first thing is well-being, anything that we can do in order to uh, 
or so the people can have support and their situation become bettered economically, economic, social, the work of the people. So in that way we'll maintain all the programs that have been initiated. The support for older adults, people with disabilities, 10 million um, grants, health, education, anything that has to do with the, the field work, with support for the workers, for the field workers, attention to the poor. That's a priority. The other priority is the rescuing of Pemex from the energy sector. We're going to continue to invest in Pemex and the commission, Federal Commission of Electricity. Um, they're fundamental companies of the nation. We had a purpose, or they had decided to try and make them disappear or, or ruin them. Now we're going to, to restore them, consolidate them, these two companies. That is to say, we're going to produce more petroleum, more gasoline, and we're going to generate more electricity. That's the second part. And the third part is the security, public security. That there not be a shortage of resources for the National Guard. And there are other priorities, but I am speaking specifically of these three basic ones. And we have other priorities. For example, we will not stop supporting the uh, Secretary of Human Rights for the searching of the young people from Sinapa, and we're not we're not going to stop supporting the victims of violence. We're going to resolve the problem with or the lamentable and grave problem of 26,000 bodies that have not been identified, that be, be, still are waiting without identification in places that are not adequate. So we're working on that program, especially for that. So if you said to me, what is it that you most, that is most important to you? Los <coughs> the luxuries in the government, that's not important. Well, it's not important for the workers to our employees, uh, public employees to have all these luxuries like planes and vehicles. It's not an important matter, but now we even 
en Japón, in Japan están vendiendo un avión they're selling a presidential airplane but it's not with all respect it's not the same to the presidential airplane that we're selling this one is like really big time no lo tiene ni Trump Trump doesn't even have one like that with all respect. <laughs> ya estamos en eso. We're already es que getting on to that. Este, por las características de la convocatoria, la subasta, hay que eh, ser cauteloso, prudentes. We have to be prudent. No se puede dar a conocer. We still can't let you know all the details yet for the process, but they're being conducted by UNO, but we're doing very well. Oh my gosh, I'm so sleepy. June this year, you announced the financing of Pemex for $8 million. So I want to know if you've been informed that in Pemex, or the director has been informed, that 25% of the personnel is from foreign, uh, foreign people. But these persons have very high salaries and benefits and if you're going to rescue a company that they left in bones, what are you going to do with that personnel? Because those posts need to be occupied by Mexican people that are qualified and that there's lots of people here that could take those jobs. I don't have that information. I don't believe that 25% of 25 personnel, percent of the personnel from Pemex, because we're talking about thousands of workers. Oh, the, the confident ones. But he still doesn't believe this is correct. The direction of Pe Pemex is in the hands of Mexican professionals. I haven't signed any, any uh, person to be hired for uh, foreign people, but in Pemex, no. But he says that they were already, they came with Peña Nieto, but no, he says, but it's not the case. Perhaps there, there are some foreign workers there when it has Pemex, to do with Pemex eh, international. international. Puede ser. That's possible. Que que ver con la when it has to do with the purchasing and sale petróleo, of petroleum, Pemex, the offices that eh, Pemex has in, el in the este foreign countries propósito. for this purpose. Pero no. But no, este, creo I do not believe that there exists these uh, strange maneras, people or foreign people in this place. And I'll investigate y, and then I'll let you, I'll answer it to you here. Some financial companies they, they say they don't believe that the economy will grow. Este 
en ese sentido, presidente, México mm. no está en el, la posición I de levantar la so voz. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to pause this video because I'm just falling asleep. Pues obviamente no dan malas notas. <laughs> so I'm going to pause y, it y here no just before he answers. Pues, okay, so we're stopping it right there. I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to stop.